I thank the organizer for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak here. We work on soft materials and Ranjini, uh, Sayanton and Pramod gave some examples of uh, soft materials. Uh, there is another major class of uh, soft materials and uh, they are liquid crystals. So in understanding liquid crystals, uh, you, we must, we, we know that uh, usually in general materials stay, stay in three different states. One is solid and then there is a, uh, a liquid and the gas, gaseous state. So if you, you can change the state of the material by just simply heating them. So this is the coldest and then this is intermediate temperature and this is high temperature. Now, is there a cost, there are questions, can there be a material which can show additional phases other than this? And the answer is yes. Uh, uh, if you take some uh, anisotropic molecule, uh, like let's say this is like rod-like molecules, this is a disc-like molecules, this is like a plate-like molecules, and this is another rod-like molecules, but it is somewhat bent. And these kind of molecules, if you are able to generate and simply heat them, uh, uh, then they show between their isotropic liquid state and the crystal state many other states. And these states are known as liquid crystalline states. So uh, at highest temperature, this, for, the, for example, this uh, rod-like molecules, this highest temperature, uh, the molecules have a lot of thermal energy. And this thermal energy make them, uh, they, they are positionally random, as well as the orientation of the molecule, sorry. As well as the orientation of the molecules are random. So this phase is isotropic in, and homogeneous in nature. But then when you cool this little bit, you will see that this orientation of the molecules get aligned. So the molecules become aligned in certain direction, but the positions are still not uh, aligned together. So, uh, so the positions is still random, but the molecules are on in 3D aligned together. So this is the orientational order it, it has come. If you would decrease little further, then that they form kind of a layered structure. Within the layer, they are like liquid-like, random, but within along the layer normal, they have a kind of a positional order and as well as the orientational order. And if you pull little less, there can be a phase which is called symmetric C phase. And this symmetric C phase, again, they have a layered structure, but the layer normal and the average orientation direction of the long axis of the molecule, which we call is direct, director N, they are at an angle. So this kind of phases, uh, you, you can realize Actually, this is a cartoon, but I, I'll just show you a molecule which shows this kind of phase transitions. And one beauty of this thing is that if you somehow able to make such molecule and you, you make a pure material of, out of these uh, molecules, and what you have to do is you have to just keep this material at some certain particular temperature and the molecules themselves will self-arrange uh, uh, between themselves. So this, you don't have to arrange by yourself, uh, they will do it for you. So, and so this uh, self-organization process give rise to some kind of uh, properties which comes about in this material, which is not present in the uh, individual molecule. So there is some kind of emergent property comes in these liquid crystalline materials. So this, so, So here, for example, is an example of a rod-like molecule. So there is a rigid uh, core-like structure. This is bending ring and there is another uh, uh, aromatic core. And both sides, there are some kind of aliphatic chain attached to it. And these molecules, if you synthesize and if you keep between these temperatures, let's say above 72 degree, it will be in the isotropic state. And if you cool below, below 72, it will form, form this pneumatic state. Between 71 to 50, it is mectic A, and below 50 and 34, it is mectic C. Below 34, it goes to crystal. So, 
so these materials are so this uh, this help organization of this uh, 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 materials is not only in interesting from the fundamental point of view because you like to know why they kind of uh, self organize into these structures so this is a theoretical questions and how a, a short range interaction between the molecules give rise to long range interaction uh, 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 between them a long range order between them and also uh, they are how the property emerge what kind of property emerge but these materials are actually useful there are a uh, lot of application of these materials so for example a liquid crystal display is now known everywhere and there are some bendable dis uh, flexible display um, uh, displays are there then this smart tv then there is uh, this software she was talking about this mems device which can uh, give uh, uh, Okay. Coming from isotropic to pneumatic or smectic A and smectic C of that, both arrangements and the molecular properties are also very relevant uh, for the total overall property. But while you coming to the again come to the crystalline property, whether the molecular property is that relevant or is it just the arrangement crystalline property? See the molecules actually what this molecule if you have made. this molecule structure is how sort of not dependent on this temperature so this molecular structure is more, more or less uh, fixed if i vary that the temperature within this temperature range so the, the you can think that all these phases are formed by the same kind of molecule only thing happening is you cool it you take out some amount of thermal energy and they themselves self organize into this kind of structure so here it was mostly random highly thermal energy and that as you were decreasing in slowly this big they uh, froze to a crystal yeah that my point is that suppose in the nematic mm -hmm. your directionality that the molecule is such that the both up and down is kind of similar direction so that is what playing a major role for yes. the properties of the things yeah. uh, similarly that is coming i can say that this is one directional liquid or uh, other directional crystal kind of things while you decrease the temperature very low when you are completely crystal condition that time whether this properties of the individual molecule mm. is significantly contributing to the bulk properties or it is just the simple crystalline property like other molecules the properties of the molecule definitely uh, contribute to the uh, uh, the uh, germination of the properties of the different phases so crystalline phases you might not have that symmetry so the, actually there are as you go from high temperature to the low temperature there will be some symmetry breaking happening here it is isotropic homogeneous here it is homogeneous but anisotropic here there is kind of some positional order came so the space homogeneity is lost so so slowly as you go from high temperature to low temperature you are actually decreasing in symmetry and whether it this will show or not depends on the molecular property not all molecule will show uh, this sequence okay so in that sense the molecular property also is uh, important and and that is the question also that if there is a interaction between the molecules that is in the local level how this local level interactions can give rise to this long range structures so this there are a lot of research on this uh, so th these are fundamental questions now <clears throat> uh, so so softoreshi was talking about some uh, 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 sp special light modulator what is this machine what it do is you give him any image he he will produce a light, he will produce a light uh, of that image so here for example einstein's uh, uh, image is projected here uh, so this kind of this kind of uh, uh, special light modulators you can make using this liquid crystal displays uh, devices then here there is a uh, uh, phase modulator or polarization rotator here there is a smart window you can change the uh, the uh, uh, the transparency of this windows using uh, applied voltage voltages so now <clears throat> uh, so now uh, one theme we are working on in our lab is uh, uh, can we have a liquid which has ferroelectric properties so in the ferroelectricity in liquid uh, solid state is well known uh, but uh, uh, the ferroelectricity in liquid state is not uh, that well known so can we have ferroelectric uh, properties in a liquid 
So, or we have, can we have a polar liquid crystal? Because liquid crystal have some directional arrangements, so they wanted to align. So, can we have a ferroelectric property in this, in this medium? Now, there are some symmetry restrictions. So, symmetry uh, uh, says that symmetry argument says that the material medium cannot be more symmetric than any of its physical uh, macroscopic properties. Now, if you take a polarization, which is like just like a polar vector. So, if this polar vector is like an arrow. Now, this arrow has a uh, symmetric uh, point symmetric group, which is called C infinity V. It is nothing but there are some symmetry uh, allowed symmetries for these arrows. For example, if you rotate uh, this arrow about this axis by infinite fold, this is an infinite fold rotation axis about this, and there are infinite number of vertical planes containing this arrow. So, this all these mirrors, uh, all these symmetries together form a group, and that's called C infinity B. Now, this symmetry argument says that if you have a medium whose, uh, which have a ferroelectric property, that medium symmetry should be a subgroup of this. You cannot have a medium which has a higher symmetry this, uh, than this, means not a subgroup of this uh, symmetry, and it is allowed, it will allow a ferroelectric polarization. Now, liquid crystals, we have uh, found some phases, and they are found to be most of them are above this, they are not subgroup of this. And if you look at, so, uh, so, uh, so if you wanted to realize the ferroelectric polarization in a medium, liquid medium, you have to somehow reduce the uh, symmetry because all the symmetry of the uh, other uh, liquid crystal phases are higher than this. So, by, uh, if you, if you, if you search the, uh, 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 this liquid crystal phases, the symmetric C, which has a, uh, this structure, it seems to have a lower, lower symmetry. It has a symmetry group called C2H. This is not a subgroup of this because of this mirror plane. This mirror plane, is, so there is a two-fold axis perpendicular to the board. So if you rotate by 180 degree this structure, it will remain, uh, appear same. And there is a mirror plane containing a parallel to the board, and there is an inversion point. So this, this symmetry group contains all these elements, and this is not a subgroup of this. So this cannot sustain the polarization. Then, uh, uh, then uh, Robert Mayer in 1974, he argued that uh, somehow if you, able to, if you able to remove this mirror plane symmetry, then this will have a C2 symmetry. So this medium will have a C2 symmetry because the mirror plane is removed, and that will be a subgroup of this. So if, if you are able to uh, do this job, you will have a, you have a chance to have a ferroelectric medium. Now, this, this he, he had done, he actually took a molecule, he didn't took, he actually convinced the chemist uh, to took a molecule, which is of this, this is the molecule, and this molecule, Earlier, it was not chiralized, but uh, it was showing that symmetric C phase. But then he asked, can you make a, one of the carbon atom here? Which, uh, this carbon atom actually connected to four other groups. So a carbon has four valency. So if you somehow make all the four valencies of a carbon at uh, atom different, then that carbon atom become chiral object because you will not have a mirror plane uh, symmetry. So if you, he, sorry. If he, uh, if he, he requested the chemist to make one of the carbon atom chiral, so this molecule as a whole become a chiral object. So, and as we know that if the molecule doesn't have chiral symmetry, there is a good chance that the medium it forms also will lose its all its uh, symmetry. So he, uh, he, he, he synthesized these uh, molecules and tested its phases and he found that they also still form a mismatic C phase because this is a very small change and they actually have a uh, ferroelectric polarization in the layer. So now uh, you see that uh, the molecules are tilted in this way and so this, this direction is the tilt plane and the polarization actually this is the C2 axis about which you can have a two-fold axis and the polarization is pointing along the uh, C2 axis. 
So you can see that there is one axis polarization in this direction, the field direction in the uh, in this direction and the layer normal. There are three mutually perpendicular directions and they can form a right-handed or left-handed uh, system, uh, chirality. So you, depending on the chirality of the medium, this configuration that two, and this medium becomes ferroelectric. Now this was, uh, so, so, this, there was a lot of excitement uh, uh, when this, this phase was discovered because ferroelectricity has certain advantages in switching the material, switching the properties of this material because you can easily couple this polarization with the applied field and you can steer them. So now, <coughs> now subsequently, it is, uh, so there are a lot of um, such materials were uh, synthesized. And one such material, it was synthesized in uh, uh, Japan. And this was also a rod-like molecules with a chiral shelter here. And it is found that uh, these materials, again, show a ferroelectric phase, like earlier uh, uh, Mayer has discovered. But this material, when it is cooled, it not only show a ferroelectric phase, at lower temperature, it shows anti-ferroelectric phase. Means one set of layer is tilted this way, and the polarization is pointing up. Other layer, set of layers is tilted this way uh, and uh, polarization is down. So the, the polarization is altering plus, minus, plus, minus, up, down, up, down, like that. Now, and interestingly, it is found that this material, when it's cooled uh, from its metric A phase, it shows this feral, uh, it shows many other phases other than this. So, for example, there is a uh, just below smectic A phase, there is a C alpha phase, they call it C alpha, and then C star, this is this phase, and then there are a lot of very electric type phases where the polarization is neither cancelling completely, there is a, there is a uh, angle between them, so there is uh, net polarization is also there, and there is an uh, antiferroelectric order is also there, sorry. Google are these phases, like what's the typical temperature? Range. range in which they're stable. The second is, what is the nature of that phase transition? Yeah, so uh, actually, mm, uh, these phases are, uh, this phase is quite short range. This phase is about uh, four or five degree, uh, and this is also about four or five degree, and this is about 10 degree. So, uh, but you can make, uh, there is actually a lot of synthesized materials is synthesized, and you can actually vary the range of these uh, phases, I mean, by synthesizing different materials. So that's not a difficulty, I think. And, and the transitions between these phases are, most of them are weak first order. So there is, when you, when you, when you go from this phase to this phase, for example, and you do a uh, study of something heat transfer between the transitions, so that's called latent heat. So you will see a small peak corresponding to the latent heat. So this in indicates that they are first order because the peak is very small. So the heat of latent heat is very small. So uh, so this 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 uh, this uh, so we 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 also uh, studied all lot of these materials which are synthesized in our chemistry laboratory uh, by professor sadashiva and we, uh, we 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 tried to see the low energy excitation modes under field for this phase and all these phases and also we have developed a, a, a theoretical model to account for all these phase transitions so this was long back uh, uh, when I was doing a PhD here with uh, Professor Modhusudana. Uh, then uh, along the way, there is some, uh, some molecule came. Yeah, you, can, you cannot take it as polarizer, but you can, uh, you can use this as uh, something called uh, phase materials. Means mm -hmm. you, when you send a light, polarized light, mm -hmm. there, is, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is something called extraordinary ray and ordinary ray, mm -hmm. they, you can introduce a phase difference between them. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, here there is no absorption. So okay. usually the polarizers, what happens is one polarizers, one polarization pass through, other is gets yeah, chopped off. Exactly. This doesn't happen okay. here. 
So if both, you the, both the both the things pass through, okay. but there is a phase difference created between them. Ah, okay. Okay. So if you just put unpolarized light, you will not see anything. Okay. Even yeah. if you send polarized light with some angle, you will not see. That's true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so by sending light, you will not be able to find any difference between. Correct. Two. Okay. Correct. So you need to have a polarizer and an analyzer on the top. But you may still recover it using an interferometry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So where any phase sensitive detections, you can uh, recover it. Okay. Can it uh, give rise to the rotation of the polarization if you send a polarized light? Yes. You can do that. Because uh, this ordinary and extraordinary uh, rays, uh, phase difference between them will determine the final polarization. Correct. Correct. Okay. So you can do that. You can change the polarization state from linear to elliptical, linear to a oh, circular, okay. linear to a, yes. and you can rotate the plane of polarization also okay. by suitable. Uh, Thanks. Are there different, uh, uh, sorry, uh, refractive indices for uh, in different to direction dependent refractive index? Yes. Is it a, there is? There is, yeah. Okay. So actually when the light is polarized this way and traveling through this, they see uh, one kind of refractive index, and when the light is polarized this way, they say it's a different refractive index. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, when it is transitioning from smectic C to smectic A, uh, CA, that uh, the ferroelectric, different phases of ferroelectric comes, is there any specific cause uh, that, that supports this ferroelectric property to this transition within this C to A? Yeah, so actually, uh, uh, the ferroelectricity comes as a consequence of the this layer order, the tilt, and the chirality. So this this here the ferroelectricity arises uh, due to the particular arrangement of the molecules within the layer. Actually, this is not arising due to some particular interaction between the dipoles. So this is kind of improper ferroelectricity. It, it, it arises because of the arrangement of the molecules. So the, the chirality, the tilt, and the layer structure together conspire to give this polarization. Okay. Now, so then uh, uh, that time people were all thinking that this uh, uh, ferroelectric property will be uh, seen only for chiral molecules because the argument came through chirality. But then. Uh, 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 there is the, somebody make a molecule which is not rod, but this just bend like this. It's called bend core banana shaped molecule. So this has this has a, a slightly lower symmetry. It's not rod. So there is a polar direction in the in the bend direction, if you can say, and there is a long axis this way. So so these molecules, when I when 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 they uh, studied the phases, they saw that this phase this, these molecules. Actually, there is no chiral center, so it's not chiral molecule, and uh, and the plane of the board is a uh, mirror plane for this molecule, and they saw some asymmetric phases with polarization property. So people were uh, uh, people were uh, uh, wondering that they uh, how the uh, how these uh, molecules are forming a uh, polar order. So now. So then subsequently another paper came in science and they analyzed these molecules, the, uh, the, the, the phases of these molecules. So here is the Bencore molecule. Now they find that actually the layer, the, since the molecules are bent, they will pack better if you, if they, if you put the polar direction in that same direction. So they, they tend to be uh, parallel to each other, the polar directions tend to be parallel to each other. And they also tilt within the layer. And they tilt also in an interesting way. The direction along which the polar direction is there, they tilt perpendicular to that uh, direction. So the tilt plane is this, and the dipole plane is uh, out of the board. So as soon as you have this, you can see that you can con reverse the argument. And though the molecules is not chiral, now this layer structure become chiral. Because there are now three directions, one is layer normal, one is this polar direction, which is out of the board, and the tilt plane, tilt directions. So this, uh, this structure, they, they, they show that even the molecules are not chiral, they can organize into a uh, macroscopic chiral layer, and that macroscopic layer becomes chiral. 
So this is a spontaneous baking of chiral symmetry in the layer. Now you can have, if, if, the, if, if, if the polarization is pointing up, if, if it tilts in this direction, then uh, it is one chirality. If it tilts in the other direction, it is opposite chirality. So since the molecule is not chiral, these two kinds of chirality is equally probable in the, in the, in the, in the sample because they are degenerate and you tend to see both this type of domains in the, in the sample. But nevertheless, in a given domain, the chirality is broken, okay. Now, <clears throat> now depending on the stacking of this layer, uh, they found that there are four possibilities. If, they, if, if, if the molecules tilt in the same direction, that, that is CA, synclinic, and the polarization is uh, also in the same direction, so polarization ferroelectric. So like that, if it is tint on the opposite direction, it is anticlinic and the polarization is in the same direction. And similarly, it's metric CAPA and CSPA. Now these structures, we can see that here the chirality between the layers remains same, but here the chirality changes. This is one chirality, that is other chirality. So these are homochiral structures and this is racemic structure. So this so all these phases uh, are um, uh, supposed to be seen in the in the in the sample and and so now uh, you, you will ask uh, how do you know whether there is polarization in the medium and if there is a polarization in the medium whether they are antiferroelectric or ferroelectric so one technique they have used is they put the sample between two glass plates and uh, in between these two glass plates, the layers are like this, vertical. So they form some kind of texture like this. So the layers are now circular layers going down. So the layers are perpendicular to the plate, but they, are, uh, they have a circular structure. Now, if, in the zero field, zero field, you see, uh, uh, this is the structure. And since one layer is tilted in the other one direction, other layer is tilted in the other direction. The optic axis is still parallel to the layer normal. So if you see under cross polarizer, you will see some dark brasses like this. And this is, uh, uh, if you apply a field, when you tilt the molecules in one direction, then the, this brasses, so in that case, the optic axis will change to some other direction from the layer normal and this brasses will rotate. So for one sign of the uh, uh, field, it rotates in one direction, other sign it rotates in other direction. So, so by looking at this switching, you will, uh, you will see that the, for positive field and negative field, there is a uh, switch in the, in the, in the, in the, in the brasses and you can sense that there is some kind of a polarization. But this can be easily uh, told whether the, uh, the polarization is ferroelectric or not by looking at uh, my measuring so you, are, you apply a voltage here, which is like, let's say, triangular wave like this, and measure the voltage drop across this resistance, which is connected in series with this. So this, this voltage drop across this will give you the current through this, if you divide by this R. So this current response is shown here. Now, if, you, if, if this material doesn't have a polarization, then you will see some graph which is, uh, which, which will be like a triangular wave because of this, uh, uh, sorry, th which will be like a square wave because of this triangular nature of this uh, applied voltage. But these peaks will come when there will be a switching in the polarization. So we know that dp dt corresponds to a current. So whenever there will be a switch of the polarization from up to down or the down to up, there will be a current induced in the circuit and that those currents will come as peak. And in one half cycle of this polarization, if there are two switches, there will be two peaks. And this means that this is anti antiferroelectric product because there are three states, plus, plus, minus, zero, plus. So there are three states and there, there will be, th so there will be three, uh, two switches. If there is only one switch, means there is only two states and that's a ferroelectric. So here this, um, in, in an energy diagram, this black line shows that this is the antiferroelectric state, which is the ground state and other two states are metastable at zero field. But when you apply the field on one, of one sign, this, this state becomes uh, lower energy, other two are metastable. And when for you change the field to other direction, 
this becomes a red one, which be, uh, this side uh, minima becomes lowest minima, other becomes metastable. stable. So using this, um, we can, we can um, uh, figure out uh, the, 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 uh, the polarization state of these materials. And of course, you can uh, do XRD and other studies uh, and see what is the, whether there is a layer structure and, on, and all. So uh, actually, mm, um, uh, these materials, the molecules are of the order of, let's say, two to five nanometer. And we do not have uh, direct technology to see those molecules. So all these studies, uh, you have to do in a macroscopic scale. And you have to inform the structure of the molecules from those measurement. So that is the difficulty um, of understanding the, uh, the properties of these materials or the actual detailed arrangement of the molecule. Yeah, so this is the dream people uh, like to have. So they want to understand that if this is the molecular structure, and if given the molecular structure, they wanted to predict what kind of structures they will form when, when, when they are treated with some temperature. So this is called structure property relationship. We are very far from it. Actually, at, at present, you are making many, many, many molecules and studying them and seeing what kind of phases they see. But we have very little understanding actually how they are going from one state to other, what is responsible, what a particular properties of the molecule which give rise to these structures, etc. So there are lots of questions. And if we can understand all of them, possibly you can uh, think of doing that. So in that case, you can make an engineer the molecule and get a tailored property, OK? <clears throat> so now, uh, uh, though th th that phase, that phase uh, is known as B2 phase because it was come into the, um, uh, in some sequence of discovery. But then uh, people uh, in our lab, uh, Professor Sodasiva make many, many such molecules. And it was found that this, apart from B2 phase, this, this molecules forms kind of other phases. This one is called B6 phase, where the molecules forms, uh, forms layers, but the layer spacing is now uh, half the molecular length from here to here. So because of the bent structure, they form an intercalated structure, and the layer spacing is only D instead of a, only L by 2 instead of L. And this is a kind of a, a, a texture you will see for this uh, uh, phase. And then if you, if, you, if, you, if there is another phase called B1 phase, here the molecules actually, again, self-organize and they form kind of columns. So the column axis is perpendicular to the board. So here three molecules form a column. Here another three molecules form a column. And these columns are arranged in a 2D lattice, okay? So this is a rectangular lattice. And this structure is also found to form for some molecules. And this is a kind of texture you will see between uh, uh, cross polarizers. And, and it is uh, with a lot of molecules, uh, it is found that actually same molecule, when the length of the chain is changed, this kind of phase uh, observed is changed. For long chain, here the chain, if you make it larger, you see B2 phase. If you make an intermediate chain here and here, this is symmetric molecule, uh, 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 then this is B1. And if you have a very short chain, you have a B6. So we were trying to understand that why this homologous series of uh, compounds with different chain length uh, the long chain shows B2 and the short chain shows B6 and intermediate one was B1. So uh, 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 what we uh, thought is uh, that it is known that uh, the, uh, this, this region, rigid portion is made of aromatic parts. And these regions which are uh, flexible are aliphatic. And there is a sort of uh, little um, uh, repulsive interaction between this core and the chain. So actually, this core and chain wants to separate uh, between themselves. But since the core and chain is tied together, they cannot simply go away from the sample. So what happens is uh, they segregate. So if when the chain is large, so core chain interaction is large enough, they segregate into layered structure like this. Because so the, now here the, you see the core, chains and core, chain are closer with the chains, and the core is with the cores. On the other hand, when the chain is short, then the entropy uh, forces them to 
pack as far as good as possible. So in this case, they pack into this uh, this uh, L by two symmetric structure. So in, in what we thought was because of the chain length, there is two competing density wave is trying to condense in the medium. One is uh, with length L by two, the wavelength L by two. Other is of wavelength D, and this structure actually is a compromise between these two competing first uh, structures. So there is a frustrated phase here. Okay. So the, we are able to develop a theory for this, and we um, we are able to explain the uh, sequence of four, um, phases depending on the length of the chain. Okay. Now these molecules actually there are other uh, banana molecules. Uh, uh, Synthesize and this one of the molecule shows um, one type of molecule shows a weird phase called B7 phase, which shows a very complicated texture between cross polarizers. So it, sometimes it shows a necklace kind of thing. Here is a uh, checkerboard. Here is a something called banana leaf. And more detailed studies, it is seen that actually these are symmetric phases, like layered structure. You have a layered structure. Symmetric means layered. And within this layer, actually the layers are not uh, flat layers. There is some undulation in the layer. So uh, people were wondering then, uh, actually, if you have a layered structure, you want you, you, you will expect that the layer have, will have some rigidity and they should try to be flat. But why do this uh, undulation comes? So uh, it is found that actually, in this uh, layer, there are strong polarization within the medium. And when you try to put the polarization in the layer parallel to each other, we know that uh, this, this is higher energy state than this. Because the, uh, the, the, uh, the plus ends of the, um, uh, the, the, the polarization tend to splay as, uh, uh, and reduce the energy. So this play of the uh, polarization within the layer uh, give rise to a undulation uh, in, in the layer structure. So this was uh, what uh, it was understood to be the due to the strong polarization within the layer. Then um, uh, in our lab, uh, recently uh, uh, Sinivasa has synthesized one compound this and I and Vishnu were seeing this uh, structure of the, uh, in the phases of this compound. And when we see in between cross polarizers, we see that at uh, some temperature, uh, uh, this compound show a, te a texture like this. And this, uh, this shows only one phase. And the texture is uh, like a fan texture, a smooth fan. And when I apply the field, uh, slowly this structure goes to some bluish color without any change of overall structure. Just the color changes from to blue at high field. And then I switch off the field. It doesn't go back here. It still stays there, more or less. So it's a kind of uh, irreversible change in the in the uh, in the in the texture, but uh, the color color of the uh, texture. But there is no uh, recovery from this start state to that state. So then, uh, interestingly, we try to think that so this 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 uh, this uh, this fan texture also you uh, indicates that it can have some kind of undulated structure. So we, we tried to see this uh, structure and in micro, uh, sorry, in XRD studies. And XRD clearly show that there are, uh, there are peaks like this, which indicate that the, there is a layered structure. But in addition to this uh, prominent peak, there are some satellite peaks between this and that, okay? So these satellite peaks can be easily, uh, uh, nicely indexed uh, with a with a layer undulation, okay. So so this 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 picture shows that there are, what will be the q, uh, q vector corresponding to those uh, undulation undulation structure. So mm, so this this phase is undulated phase in undulated layer structure. But then we thought that uh, since the undulation is caused by strong polarization in the medium, let's measure the polarization, and we find that we find that uh, this medium doesn't have any polarization uh, we tested with uh, high field. So you know, this medium doesn't have a field uh, polarization. Also, 
the uh, medium which is uh, switched by electric field that is also not doesn't have any polarized. So the question is why then there is an undulation in this uh, in this case. So then uh, we, we, we thought that this molecule is somewhat then we thought uh, that this molecule is for some, this arm is slightly different from that arm. So we thought that this asymmetry has possibly uh, play a role and uh, and the tilt of the molecule is not uh, like the B2 phase, but the molecules now tilt in the plane of the molecule. So this is called leaning of the molecule. And this leaning of the molecules can give rise to a difference between be difference between the up of the layer layer and bottom of the layer and this difference can create uh, curvature in the medium so uh, in the in the in, in the in the in, in the uh, layer structure so this is what we are thinking and it is uh, going on still so in, in, in there are other molecules which uh, is synthesized here so this is this molecule this molecule again when we study we see that these molecules shows no no none texture of the other phases of B, B phases but it shows a texture like this so in the between cross polarizer it this phase appear extremely dark so this is that's why it's called dark conglomerate phase but so if you if you make them exactly uh, cross polarizer this and this exactly 90 degree you will not see any difference they are all dark okay but if you make it slightly uncrossed you will see some domains, black domains and white domains. And if you make the uncross on the other way, those which were black become white and, and white becomes the black. So there is a, there is, so this means that this is kind of an isotropic uh, phase with a, some kind of a chiral structure because the layer, uh, actually the polarization is rotating in one direction here and one direction here. Mm -hmm. That's why this uh, black and white contrast. But then, uh, if you if you if you if you try to study by XRD, you will see that this XRD shows that there is a, mm, uh, a layer structure in this medium. So the question is, you have a layer structure and layers have some rigidity. How you pack those layers into a isotropic state like that and have a chirality? So this, I think. So the 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 the. The models for this was proposed is this. Uh, somehow, because of some reason, possibly the layers are trying to bend. And this bending of the layers can produce a, a, some, something called plumber's nightmare, like this phase. Or they can generate some defects. It's called focal conic defects. And there is an array of defects in this uh, in these materials. And that can give rise to this isotropic nature of this phase. So, then we have another molecule like this is again a, a ben Bencore molecule, but this is there is no chain here, but there is a chain here. Now this molecule, when I go to the uh, higher phase, it's still in the symmetric A phase, but look dark. And when you when you when you cool it, it becomes uh, some birefringence with 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 some uh, uh, some defects within that. So this is called sclerin texture. So. Uh, if you if you analyze all the experimental results, you will find that the structure is somewhat like this. In the higher phase, the molecules are the arrow directions are randomly oriented, and in the lower phase, the arrow directions are not uh, randomly oriented in, in a layer. One layer is this way, other layer is opposite direction. So this is antiferroelectric order, and this is like a no polarization because of the random nature of this. And it, this is somewhat different from this mismectic A phase in the sense that if you apply field in the plane of the layer, you will see a kind of re, a reorientation of this polarization along the direction of the field. So, and that shows up as a peak in the current response. So this phase is also, we, we have uh, tried to do a theory of these uh, phases and, and able to account for this, uh, uh, these properties. Now, <clears throat> there is another molecule here. You, this is also a Bencore molecule, but here there is a uh, there is a group called this is called azo group N N double bond N, and this azo group is light sensitive. If you if if, if you, in one state it is a uh, trans state like this this, or if you sign some kind of some frequency light, 
this will change to a, a gauss state or c state uh, so this uh, so this means that uh, this this group is uh, uh, light sensitive so the structure of the molecule is light sensitive so we tried to see if these molecules forms this uh, liquid crystalline phases if i shine light can i change the state of the uh, material so here I, I show that this is at a 135 degree it is isotropic state i cooling it and I go to the phase at 130 degree. degree. Then I start signing the light. At, uh, and after some time, I see that this, this phase, which was formed at 133, is slowly turning to isotropic phase. So this is light induced uh, uh, formation of isotropic uh, structure. Now, <clears throat> uh, now uh, uh, then we, uh, we try to understand that uh, we, we, it, is, it is now well established that these banana molecules um, so, sort of uh, tilt in such a way that they break the chiral symmetry. So the question is, why do then molecules try to tilt in a plane perpendicular to this direction? So to understand this, um, before can we, uh, I am trying to understand through something called excluded volume interaction. Means you model this as some kind of a rigid uh, object. And one more molecule will not able to penetrate the space of this molecule. So this, so uh, about one of the molecule, there will be some space left around, and that's called excluded volume. And if the, if you able to, mm, so so this excluded volume, if you minimize, that is en ent entropically uh, favorable. So we wanted to see if this mm, uh, this uh, this uh, excluded volume calculation so that this in, uh, symmetry breaking, chiral symmetry breaking is as a consequence of excluded volume effect or not. So this excluded volume calculation for this kind of molecule is extremely difficult. Uh, we use computer uh, simulations and actually move the molecules by physically around one and create the volume and then calculate the volume. So this uh, Deepak did and uh, we find that indeed the excluded volume has some minimum at 0, uh, pi, uh, 2 pi, etc. So which shows that the minimum excluded volume angle occur when the tilt is such that it breaks the chiral symmetry. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so for different uh, uh, bend angle and different tilt angle, we have those calculations. Then, uh, we, we, we are uh, all looking at uh, this Bencor banana seven molecules. They have the similar length of the both the arms. Then one day, uh, so, that so when you do this, uh, that the simulation is excluded volume. So you do it in continuum or lat? Uh, it's, it's discrete. So you, you hold the one molecule and bring another molecule and see how much it can approach. Mm -hmm. Then bring it from another direction, beam mm -hmm. it from another direction. No, I'm saying if you put a lattice, you can just use as a rods, right? I mean, like a, uh, rods using two or three lattice points instead of using continuum vol volume. Uh, I mean, if you just instead of the angle, if you make it 90 degree, will it uh, change anything? Like? This, this beta? Yeah, beta. Uh, yeah, yeah. It will, uh, it will, uh, so the excluded volume will be sensitive to this angle parameter beta. This uh, uh, this length uh, and d etc. Everything. So here the molecule is uh, uh, molecule is modeled as a set of beads connected like this, of radius two r uh, this uh, diameter two r. And here this Bencor molecule is modeled as two spherocylinders joined end to end with an angle beta. And uh, and and physics is very sensitive to beta. It uh, yes it seems. It, it seems uh, because see beta when it goes to linear uh, linear uh, I mean 180 degree then it becomes a linear molecule mm -hmm. and if the linear molecule has a very different phases than this uh, no same. but uh, beta equal to 90 degree and beta equal to let's say 180, 120 degree uh, 120 degree and 90 degree there is a, a, a large change but between let's say 140 and 110 there is less sensitive. No, I'm just wondering, wouldn't it be very easy to just do the simulation instead of continuum just say on a lattice, let's say square lattice in 2D or like a cubic lattice in 3D and you just assume that they occupy multiple points basically. Yeah, maybe that is, 
that is possible i think right yeah that is some something to flurry uh, yeah i mean like a, it's like a dimer or trimer or something like that depending on your yeah beat. i think that is possible but what he did is physically bringing the molecules from all sides and okay. seeing what volume is excluded around the given molecule and then he calculate numerically what is the okay okay uh, excluded okay, okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, uh, we were looking at all these uh, ben symmetric bent core molecules, but then one day, Shavashiva uh, and we, I was, uh, was uh, I mean, we, uh, one day he, he said, why not we make one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, arm much shorter. So this, this is the bent core molecule. If I make one of the arm shorter, it, we call it the hockey stick molecule, because this is a long arm and this is a short arm. And so these hockey stick molecules are, have an intermediate shape between this banana and this rod. If, the, if this rod is very short, then you, it is really rod-like. And this arm, uh, and if this arm is longer, then it will look like this. So uh, we know that this kind of molecule, these are called calamitic molecules, they can kind of show this kind of calamitic phases. And uh, this is so this. So the question is, what kind of phases this uh, hockey stick uh, separate molecules uh, will show. And actually he synthesized a molecule uh, of that hockey stick uh, shape. So this is the molecule actually. And we found that actually they have two smectic C phases. And uh, there, are, there is no polarization in this, uh, in this smectic C phases. And uh, so the upper phase is, this is uh, in two geometries, the upper phase, the texture, and this is another uh, two geometries for the lower phase. And the X-ray shows this, there is a scalar layer structure. Then we found that actually these molecules in a layer forms a pair like this. And this is a kind of like a zigzag structure. And this zigzag shapes actually pack in the layer. And we able to uh, uh, use a, a model um, using a pseudo, -polar, uh, pseudo polar order in the layer. Earlier, the polarization was a polar order in the layer. Now, this is a pseudo polar order in the layer. And we able to show possible structures. And, uh, and using this model, we somewhat able to understand why um, uh, this kind of uh, um, structure are uh, uh, happening. Okay. So, <clears throat> Then uh, 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 this is with uh, Sai Chand, uh, me and Jasudan. Actually, if you, if you put a, a orientational order on a curved surface, uh, what is the effect of orient, uh, 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 what is the coupling of the orientational order on the, uh, on the quant surface? Means how, the, how, how can you put the orientational order on a curved surface? So for example, if you wanted to put uh, the uh, a orientational order, vector order, which is div uh, given by an arrow, and cover the this surface of this uh, uh, of this uh, sphere, then you will see that there is some theorems uh, uh, which says that uh, uh, you cannot do this covering with this vector order or uh, tensor order uh, uh, without having a defect. And actually, they also specify that for sphere, the total uh, strength of the defect should be two plus two. So uh, you will see, that, so there are a lot of structures where people have uh, tried to uh, see how they, they can cover this uh, sphere with, uh, uh, with this vector order. And you always end up with plus two plus one defects, one at the one pole and another is another pole. So this is two point defects. This is usual people have uh, always uh, talked about. But Josodhan uh, and Sai Chan basically they come up with another uh, solution of the uh, minimization condition and they found that this can be covered with a line defect. So, so it, it, this is a, it, along the or line or wall defect. In 2D, it is a wall defect. So you have a line of singularity along the equator. And everywhere else, the, uh, the, the vector order parameter is continuous. So singularity is on a line. So this line singularity, they have come up with it, and it is found that uh, 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 at some appropriate temperature range, um, uh, this, this structure has a lower energy 
than those point uh, point singular structure. So this also is studied in this uh, in this uh, 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 catenoid uh, surface. So again, there is a uh, uh, there is a line singularity um, on the on the on the neck of the this uh, uh, catenoid, and this is a helicoid. Helicoid also there is a so these two surfaces are isomorphic. Uh, so you can go from one to other. So these uh, studies are done um, um, with, uh, with Josh Rosen and Sai Chan. Uh, then uh, uh, we, 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 were, we were studying various uh, liquid crystals and then we found that there is some liquid crystal called A2CB. This is a highly strong rod-like, strongly polar rod-like molecule. And we found that this molecule, when you, um, when you um, uh, heat it, at some 54 degree, it melts to some uh, some liquid phase. But when you cool it, it has a long, uh, uh, large uh, supercooling. Means it doesn't go to crystal easily. So if, uh, at 54, it goes to a melted state. But if you cool it back up to 30 degree, it doesn't go to that solid state. So there is a strong supercooling effect of this material. So this is somewhat weird because this is usually the supercooling is two, three, four degree, but this is not about 24 degrees. So, and also this material is found to be uh, showing many kinds of solid states. So one, this is one solid state it forms. This is called some of somewhat CP, uh, CP uh, crystal phase. Um, means commercial powder, CP stands for commercial powder phase. This has a very grainy structure and it's found to be, uh, be uh, we, we, we studied this and we found that this is kind of a, not a homogeneous phase, but it's a uh, inhomogeneous phase, coexistence of two types of phase. And there is another phase which we, when we cool from the melt, we get another metastable crystal phase. This is called PP phase or, um, and this PP phase is a homogeneous phase. Mm, and it grows in uh, in the in the in the in the uh, in the liquid. So uh, now, uh, when we studied this CP phase, we find that actually the CP phase is uh, if you if you do this ACM studies, you will see that yeah, CP phase is not a actually homogeneous phase. There are lots of fibrillar like crystals inside, <laughs> and within the between the crystal, there is a, some kind of amorphous phase. So there is a, this is a coexistence of these two, uh, uh, two phases in the CP phase. And here is a cross-sectional view of this crystallite. You see that this is a cross-section of the crystallite. Here the ACM of the PP phase, the PP phase on the other hand, you see that there is a homogeneous uh, uniform texture. So uh, PP phase is somewhat homogeneous. So we were, so this is a more small molecular system. Uh, it's not like, uh, I mean, uh, about two, angstrom, uh, two nanometer size. So these molecules are supposed to rearrange themselves uh, uh, and go to a homogeneous, uh, homogeneous state. But why this molecule is showing a gr stable ground state? So this is found to be stable than this. So why these molecules is showing this weird uh, coexistence of two phases at, as is ground state is not clear. Then, <coughs> So uh, then we um, uh, we also found that this CP phase, if you uh, uh, if you supercool it, uh, sorry, CP phase when you supercool it, sometimes it forms a spherulitic growth. So this spherulitic growth is nothing but uh, the uh, the crystal phase grow from a seed, and the seed uh, when it grows, it has a spherical shape. Okay. Now, the spherical shape is not compatible with usually with the lattice structure. Lattice structures try to give a facetted uh, growth. So, so, but this is uh, not that. So, this is not expected. So, the question is, mm, uh, so this, this, is, uh, this is the so-called spherulitic growth. This is though not expected. There are many, many compounds uh, found in the, in, the, in, the, in the literature which show this kind of growth. And why this type of growth is happening, the microscopic origin of this is still not known. But people are able to do experiments and try to show, see what happens here. And this is, uh, uh, it is found that, sorry, it is found that in this type of growth, actually, uh, there is some kind of a, uh, so this phase is not always, uh, uh, in, in this uh, uh, crystal phase, there is some kind of a, uh, some kind of a fibril like sticks like object grows and they are aligned along the radial direction. 
and those uh, those fibrillar crystallites branch as they go away from the center to fill up the space. So actually, this is not really a coherent crystal structure. This is a this is actually uh, formed by branching fibrillar crystallites, and this branching happens in a non-crystallographic direction. So then. When it is also found that there are some uh, uh, spherulite, when you see, uh, uh, when you slice them between two plates, uh, you will see them as circular growth, and within that circular growth, you will see some kind of bands. So this is called banded spherulite, and uh, so the, this is pictures of two types of materials showing the, this banded spherulite. One is aspirin, other is. Uh, 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 some liquid crystal molecule. Now, uh, why these bands forms? So, in uh, many kinds of polymers also show this, uh, show this banded structure. And it is uh, proposed, uh, it is accepted also and is proposed that when these fibular crystallites grow this way, they tend to twist. So, the fibular crystallization has a twist uh, uh, as they grow. And that twist give rise to some changes in the birefringence along the radial direction. And those birefringence change produce this, uh, uh, this um, bands. But then, so this is the, this is the mechanism the, uh, it is proposed. So as, the, as, the, as these fibular crystallites are growing, they have a twist. And this twist produce some uh, change in the birefringence. So here I have a low bioprecision, then large bioprecision, then low bioprecision like that. And when you see this structure between cross polarizer, you will end up with these uh, bands. Now, uh, coming to our uh, our banded spherulite. So this HOCB, we see that there is they also form some kind of banded spherulite if you cool them. Uh, I mean, you, you, with appropriate supercooling. So uh, so this also shows some kind of bands. There are lots of bands. And if you if you if you place some lambda plate, you can also find out which way the optic axis are. So uh, so this white arrow shows that the optic axis of the crystals are like that. And if you if you if you you, you also have some uh, some some supercooling where there is a continuous spherulite. And in the continuous spherulite also the optic axis is like that. So we were wondering. Why then this uh, uh, bands is forming? Is there a twist in our system also? So it is. We we did uh, uh, SEM studies of this uh, banded spherulite, and actually we find that uh, in this system there is no twist in the crystallites, but there is a periodic variation of crystallite rich zones and crystallite poor zones. So the crystallites grows here more. Then there is a zone which is morely, mostly amorphous. Then again, crystallite zones like that. So the, here it is, uh, here it is uh, also slightly uh, zoomed version, I think, of this. And uh, here it shows the, that amorphous zones more clearly. So, uh, uh, so in our in our system, we find that the uh, the banded spherulite is forming because of the periodic variation in the composition of the materials, not the twisting of the fibrillar crystallites. And uh, I think this is the first report of this kind of uh, 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 banded spherulite due to the, uh, in a small molecular system. So, so, so this, uh, this give rise to uh, uh, the, the so we did a lot of optical studies of this uh, of this spherulitic zone, uh, and then we found that actually the optic axis of these uh, 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 materials are along the radial direction, and the sign of the uh, birefringence is negative. This means that these are these these are oblate uh, oblate uh, spheroids, not prolate spheroids, and uh, and within the within the spherulite. Uh, the birefringence is varying due to the variation in the composition. Okay, so then to understand this, uh, there is some uh, uh, some uh, model called time-dependent Ginzburg-Landau model. So we define two order parameters. One is this uh, density, 
variation and one is this uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the order parameter to uh, uh, take into account the phase transition to the crystalline state. So, this this is sim this is being a density, this is a conserved order parameter. Uh, that is means that this quantity integrated over the whole volume should remain constant and this is a non-conserved order parameter. So, these two uh, order parameters, there are some well-known theories for their uh, time dependent equations. So, we have uh, uh, put those, uh, use those equations here with some this boundary conditions and this equation is non-linear because of these terms, this is a cubic term and so this is not possible to do analytical solutions, but you can do uh, linear stability analysis. So, we did a stable linear stability analysis of this model as well as we did a numerical computer uh, solution of these equations and we able to uh, uh, able to understand or, or account for that uh, 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 this uh, um, van der spherulitic growth. Here there is a how to choose the, I, I think it's movie you cannot play is it. So, you can you, here it is showing the uh, time dependent change in the phi and psi that two order parameters. So, you can you can see this is uh, so here one thing to notice here is that so here you, you if you notice the notice the uh, growth of these uh, rings you will see that the growth is not uh, linear but there is a rhythmic growth. So, it is a step like growth. So, this is called uh, rhythmic uh, uh, growth of these crystals and uh, if you if you if you take the cross section and see the plot the phi and psi. So, this uh, these are in, uh, this is a cross sectional view of that and we 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 use the linear stability analysis as well as uh, the simulation values and we also measure the periodicity of those uh, bands the periodicity of this band at different supercooling and we, the theory and experiment seems to be able to match. So, we believe that this is a reasonable explanation of our the banded spherulatic growth in our system. So, in conclusion liquid crystals are a major class of soft renewable materials. These materials already have large number of commercial application. Potential future applications are there in these materials. So, organic semiconducting materials are now uh, taken up in many uh, laboratories. Then there are a lot of photonics and optical metamaterials applications and there are, there are these sensor applications. They are still not uh, uh, I mean uh, commercial, but uh, there is vigorous studies on this. Uh, then I want to acknowledge, uh, I want to acknowledge Professor Madhusudana who introduced me to this uh, liquid crystal. Professor B.K. Sadasiva, he gave me a lot of chemistry uh, knowledge as well as samples. And then there are Lakshminaran, Potiva, Jashodhan, Raghunathan, Sandeep Kumar, all of them are uh, retired, but I am happy that I am able to work with all of them, almost all of them. Then uh, this Srinivasa is recently synthesizing some molecules and giving us for studying. The Surajit in Hyderabad is also uh, a uh, co collaborator. The Bina Prasad from CNS gives some samples. K.B. Ravanathan and this uh, Narasimha Swami and uh, uh, Lobo, they are from ISC and CLRI. They, uh, we, 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 have a, we have a collaboration on NMR studies and, and their samples. And then Minal and Soma were some postdocs. And I would, I, this works is a lot of technical help from Bosuda. Bosuda is the XRD, Jyotindan from ACM and other. Mani, Ram and Dasan gave us uh, a lot of technical help. And I am sure I have taken a lot of help from other people in RRI. I thank all of them. Uh, <clears throat> and here is the, uh, there are some uh, lab members. This is Vishnu, Sai Chan, uh, Sarnak, uh, Subodip, Ghosh, and uh, Deepak. And this is, uh, this is uh, Deepshika who has finished and gone for abroad for postdoc. And then I am also recently working with uh, some student in our chemistry lab, Mari Chandran, Irla, and Vani Sri and Alka. I am sorry I am not able to uh, highlight their work. I will look forward to some other opportunity to uh, highlight their work. Actually, they made some interesting disc-like molecules. 
and so some uh, um, uh, semiconducting properties in this material. So thank you. You showed one of the structures which is like this plumper's nightmare <laughs> structure. That involves huge amount of bent uh, yes. deformations, right? Yeah. But so it's surprising, isn't it surprising that it's that thermodynamically stable? It is very, very surprising that the layers are bending so much. You don't expect. And I think there is no theory for understanding this uh, strong bend in the layer structure. So if that's it, we'll wrap up this session by thanking Dr. Roy.